everybody and welcome to another edition of Lane Side Reviews. And on this very special Pro Shop edition, we're going to be looking at a different kind of grip with vacuum inserts. Alright guys, so welcome back. As always, I am the Bearded Beast, Rob Johnson, and today we're going to be getting a little more in-depth with a different kind of grip. For those of you who've watched our videos before and kind of kept tabs on what people are doing in the industry, you'll know that there are, well, insert grips, there's no insert grips, and then there is the vacuum style insert grip. Now, going a little bit into history, a few years back, Vice came out with what they called their Vacu Insert. It was a special insert that went into a special coupler that went in the bottom of your finger insert and gave you a different feel. They were drilled a little bit differently and definitely had an impact and a change on how you release the ball. So we tried it a few reviews ago with the uh, Vandal Destroy, and we were very impressed with it. When we talked a little bit about it on air, people seemed to be very interested. So I decided to come into the shop today, grab a scrap ball, and uh, show you how it's done, and talk a little bit about how it impacts your release. Now this is very important to understand. Even though Vice came out with the vacuum insert originally, this is something that can be done with any style of insert. And I'm going to teach you guys how. Myself being a turbo guy, I found my best results have been with my turbo inserts done in the same style to give me a little bit more turn on the ball. The way that it feels, the way that it comes off your hand is so snug, it just, as I said, changes your release a little bit. But rather than listening to me talk about it, why don't we go to the press, lay out a ball, drill it, and see how it looks. All right, guys, so here we are at the bench. Uh, I've got myself uh, what I would call a scrap ball. It's just a, a ball that we've used before, uh, done some testing with some other holes on it. Uh, so we're going to use this today to drill our, uh, our vacuum style inserts. Um, so the first thing you need, obviously, is your center line and your midline. Uh, so we're just going to pick a spot on the ball here. Normally your pro shop operator is going to do this, and for you pro shop operators, you lay a ball out just normally as you would. Um, this is actually a very easy process. Uh, one thing I do recommend, always make sure you keep your pencil sharp. Um, makes your lines thinner, makes you more accurate when you're drilling. Uh, so now we have our center line and our mid line. Now, for myself, I always drill for switch grips, so I happen to know my, uh, my cut to cut for my switch grip, so I'm going to lay it out that way. Uh, so from my midline, going right here. Now, we're not going to drill the whole ball, but we're just going to lay it out as if we were laying out a full ball. So we're going to get our thumb cut and our finger cuts. I'm going to use a different color on these ones, uh, just so it's a little more visible. Boop. Maybe not. A pencil broke on me. All right. So as you can see here, uh, we've got the ball laid out here. We've got our thumb cut line right here. We've got our finger cut line right here. Let's put some bridge lines in there. We'll get everything set up as if we were drilling a regular ball. Now I'm just doing this quickly. Obviously, you pro shop guys, take your time with this. Uh, there is very little that a bowler can do to out bowl a bad fit. So always make sure you take your time laying out your ball. Uh, make sure you take your time lining it up in your press uh, so that way you can repeat your fit for each bowler on any ball they bring you. Very important, and especially important with these vacuum style inserts. 
So we've got our ball laid out here. Now normally, when we take this on the press, we'd be putting our 31 30 second holes here and whatever kind of thumb hole we have right here, and we'd just be drilling it up as normal. The only real difference we're seeing here is actually in the size of the hole for the fingers. Now, if you've ever looked at an insert, just happen to have a uh, turbo uh, quad 11 30 seconds right here, um, you'll know that most inserts are 31 30 seconds uh, in size when you're cutting those holes out there. So 31 30 seconds. That's a normal hole. Well, there's nothing normal about vacuum inserts. So the first thing you need to know is you have to actually line up for one and one thirty second. So you're actually increasing the size of the hole by one sixteenth. It doesn't sound like a whole heck of a lot, does it? I mean, if you think about it, if you look at a, at a span ruler here, that itty bitty space right there. Look at that. That, not even, like that. That is one sixteenth. Doesn't seem like a lot, but it is a huge difference when you're doing these vacuum inserts. So you have to line up your bit uh, and your press based on a larger insert. Now what's going to happen is you're actually going to drill this insert one inch deep at one and one thirty second. Then once you're done drilling one inch down, you're actually going to change bits back to your 31 30 second and go an additional one inch down. So you're actually going to end up with a bit of a tiered uh, finger hole. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm actually going to put up a little graphic right about here. I'm going to show you um, what the original vacuum insert did and I'm also going to show you what the hole for what we're doing uh, to do it with any kind of insert looks like. Um, so I'll put that up right now. Alright, so now that you guys have seen what the hole is going to look like, you're probably wondering, well, how the heck is that going to work? Well, let me just grab a, uh, a full insert here. When that insert actually goes inside the hole, what's going to happen is part of it is going to be snug like a 31 30 second. And the top part is going to have a little bit more give because it's going to have that 1 16th or 31 30 seconds on each side. Well, technically, if it was equal, 31 30 seconds on each side of the hole to give you a little more room. Now you're going to see a difference why I say technically once we go to, to glue this insert in. Um, but we've got this lined up. We know the depths that we're going to go to. We know that we're going to have a little bit of a different hole. So well, let's take it over to the press. Let's drill the 31 30 second hole. And then we're going to actually put a 30, a, uh, a, a 1 and 1 30 second hole on this side and a 31 30 second hole on this side. So you can actually see close up the difference in how the grip sits in the ball. So let's take it over to the press. Alright guys, so here we are. We've got the ball locked in the press. Uh, as you guys know, I have a, um, well, it's probably a hundred year old Gilbag machine. Um, everyone's press is going to be a little differently. Uh, the principle works on any kind of press, whether it be a mill press, uh, a Gilmac, a desktop, it doesn't matter what kind. Uh, so we've got our ball lined up. Uh, we've got it on our marks here. Uh, and we've got it adjusted for a 1 and 1 30 second bit. So why don't we put a hole in this sucker? So uh, I'm going to turn the volume down at this point so you don't have to listen to the ridiculously loud press. Um, so here we go.
All right, so we've put that 31 30 second hole in there now. Now we're going to switch back to our 31 30 second bit. And we're going to continue back down for the rest of the hole size. Uh, so I'm going to turn the volume down again so you guys don't have to listen. Okay, so we've got ourselves a two-tiered hole with one and one thirty-second at the first inch and thirty-one thirty-second at the bottom. I'm going to uh, punch a thirty-one thirty-second hole beside it, and then I'll show you the difference of what it looks like. Okay, guys, so you can see right here we've got our thirty-one thir our, our one and one thirty-second hole and our thirty-one thirty-second hole. You can see there's quite a bit of difference in the size of them there. Now the other thing you should be able to see here is right on the inside. You can see that little lip that's on the inside. That's going to give us our vacuum seal. That's going to give us that uh, vacuum grip. And we'll take it one step further. I'll show you here. We've got our grip. And you can see it fits very snugly in the 31 30 second hole but when we go to the 1 1 30 second hole you can see it just slides right in there and we've got some room around it now this is a very very important part when you're doing uh, vacuum style grips vacuum suction grips um, because the insert is going to distort when it's glued in. You actually want to go down a couple of sizes to make sure that your finger is going to be as tight as possible. Now you can see here I usually use a 25 30 seconds Turbo Quad 1 or Quad Classic. These are my Quad Classics. These are what I usually use. Um, and uh, I mean that fits my finger very well. It fits there perfectly but when I do a vacuum grip, I actually use an 11 30 seconds. That is a huge, huge difference in the size of the hole. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, back up here so that you guys can see me install these. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about fit. Okay, so here we have our holes. Now very, very important, as every pro shop should do. Once you drill any kind of hole, make sure you hit it with a beveler. That's a little poorly done on my part, but just to show you, uh, any of these sharp edges that you get up here, if this impacts with a pin or with a kickboard or something in the back, it's more than likely going to end up chipping and cracking away at your finger holes. Uh, and it's such an easy step for people to do. If you get a ball and you see really sharp edges on it, take a small piece of sandpaper and just knock them off. It will increase the life of your ball significantly. All right, so we have our turbo number 11. I've also, for you vice guys out there, I have gone out and grabbed myself a vice insert so that we can show it works with any kind of insert. Uh, now you'll notice here, my vice one is oval. My turbo one is a regular ledged quad one that I've got right here. It doesn't matter 
what style you use, what the configuration on your finger is. Uh, I know from personal experience and talking to other um, other bowlers and other shops, they tend to use ovals more. I would agree that the oval will give you a more uh, complete fit, but some bowlers just cannot use those ovals. And you can see it does work with the ledged one. It's going to give you a little bit of a different feel, but still totally doable. All right. So I'm going to start with the vise insert, and I'll show you how this works. It's really easy. You take your insert, you line it up with your cut line for your fingers, with your oval, and you push it in. You want the front edge to be nice and flat here. Yes, there may be a little bit of overrun to the sides, to the back, but it's very, very, very important that this front edge is directly on the, uh, the outside of the hole here. And you'll see why in a second. So let me grab a couple of tools here, my paring knife and my tape remover. And we're gonna grab my do do I'm using uh, Zip Plus from Turbo. Um, I like it because it's not, even though it is a fast drying glue, the catalyst in it uh, doesn't create too much heat. Uh, so you don't have to worry about if you spill it and you're wiping it up with a rag. You don't have to worry about your rag bursting into flames. Um, it has happened to me. I didn't actually know there was a difference in the catalysts up until I took my Ipsia course. Um, I knew that they dried at different amounts, but I didn't realize that the catalyst can also have different amounts of heat. Um, so I just use the turbo. It's awesome. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this insert. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Uh, I'll do what they call the quote-unquote correct way first. Um, I'm going to pull back. So I put my insert piece in the front of the insert, and I've gotten all the way down to the very front of this insert. I'm going to take a little bit of glue. We're just going to put boop, 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 a dab at the front. And we're going to press it down. It's at the very bottom front of this insert. Not along the outside, not all the way around the outside, just one dab at the very front. We're gonna do the same thing at the back. I'm gonna take our tape piece here, gonna get myself some glue at the back, right down at the bottom, and we're gonna press it in real good. Last piece of glue going in. One dot, right at the very front, at the very top. Just a small amount to keep that insert directly against. Remember I said that leading edge there? Gotta have that leading edge. Oop, now, you'll see I made a mistake here. When I was taking my glue piece out, I got a little bit at the back here. You cannot have glue at the back. You need that to be free floating. I'm just gonna cut that back a little bit here. So you have to be very careful. It's a little more difficult to do this sideways, but you'll see with this insert, if we compare it, say, to my 11 here that I've just pushed into the 31 32nd hole, and I get a little bit tighter here, you can see that there is an open edge all around the sides here, and you can see the gap. And this one is very tight. If you look, look how big that 11 30 seconds hole has gotten. Okay? In comparison, same sized inserts. This one's in a 31 30 second hole, one and one 30 second. Ugh. I cannot force my finger. I can't even get my other finger into that insert. This one slides right in. 
It allows the insert to expand this way, so side to side, whoop, very easily because it's closing the distance this way. You can see it slides in and listen to this. You actually hear that vacuum suction right in that hole already. Now when this moves like this, it's going to stay on your finger a little more and this insert actually has some room to flex. So it actually allows you to keep the ball on your finger a little longer and when you rotate it off your hand, when it rotates off, the insert actually moves with it, staying a little longer, imparting, depending on who you talk to, anywhere from 25 to 50 additional revolutions on the ball. But we're not done yet. I said you could do this with any kind of insert. Originally this was designed for the vacuum insert and there was, a, as I showed you in that little image, there was a little cup that sat in the bottom to give you that airtight. All we've done is created that airtight at the bottom of the insert by putting a little bit of glue there. Let me grab my grip extractor here. And we're just going to pull that and then we're going to feed it down a little farther into the hole. Pull that insert right out. So let's do it with a turbo grip. Now this one's been cut down. You can see it's been cut down a little bit. It's not the full length. You want to try to use as much of the insert as possible so that um, it gets that good vacuum seal to the bottom. Now let's take that one we just had in the vacuum insert spot. We're going to push it in there and look. And see how rigid is it again? There's no play to the outside. It doesn't expand. It no longer fits. My fat fingers. But you can see, same idea, look. Pushed it in. We've got that room to the, to the top again. Let's glue this sucker in so you can actually see it in, in action. Glue stick. Same idea. Let's get that front insert glued into spot. So a little dab a dab of glue right there. And we're gonna. Ooh, I missed it. There we go. And we're going to put a little dabby dab at the back. Also, if you guys are making fun of my dabby dab, I'm going to be angry. Or at least slightly hurt. Dabba dabba dabba. Dabba dabba dabba. All right, we got the bottom glued. Same idea, we're going to put that little dab right at the front again to keep it along that leading edge. Glue it to that leading edge. Bada bing, we are done. And once again, remember this was the insert that was over here, the one that we couldn't get my finger in? All the way in now. Do you see how much it expands? You can hear. You can hear that vacuum in it already. So, this is how you insert them in the ball, how you glue them in, how they feel, how they look. Let's talk a little more about uh, where to put them in and if you can add them to an existing ball. All right, guys, welcome back. So as I said, there's a couple of important things that you need to know about adding these to an existing ball. Now, we are changing the size of the hole from a 31 32nd to a 1 and 1 32nd, a 1 16th difference. If you try to add this to an existing ball, remember that you are going to be shorting your span. 
because we're not gluing it in the center of the hole, you are in fact shrinking your span by up to 1 16th. So if you're going to try this on an existing ball, it may be a good time to get it plugged and re-drill into that finger. Simply because it's going to change the feel completely of how this ball is going to be when you release it. Not only your fingertips, as you have that suction, you have that different release, it's going to shrink your span, which may cause you to grab a little bit. Conversely, because these inserts expand so much on your fingers, it is going to change how it feels as it comes off your hand when you release it. So you're going to have to make sure you get used to this before you throw it regularly. I myself know when I changed over to it in the Vandal Destroy, it took me a good three or four games to get used to not grabbing it because it felt like it was going to fall off my hand. Now don't worry because it's not actually going to fall off. That vacuum uh, suction that you create in that insert is going to hold that ball on your hand through the entire shot. But because you are probably used to throwing it with a nice snug feel on the exterior of the insert, it's going to feel much different. As always guys, I can't tell you what to use and what not to use. All I can show you is what we've done and give you a little insight into how we've done it. As I've said through this whole video, you can use any inserts to make a vacuum suction grip doesn't matter if you're a vice guy, if you're a contour guy, or if you're a turbo guy like me. The importance is following the procedures, following those steps, making sure that you apply the glue in the proper spot, making sure that that 31 32nd hole is centered inside the 1 and 1 32nd hole to make sure that you have that lip all the way around. Lastly, as always, give it a try outside a league. See what you think of it. See how it feels to you. It might be the next greatest thing for you, or it might feel terrible. The important thing is, try something new. So until next time, guys, we'll see you late side. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for another show. If you like what you saw this episode and want to find out more, don't forget to follow us on Facebook at Laneside Reviews, or click below. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, or click on the box. Or and if you missed our last video or just want to watch it again, you can click on the other box. And don't forget you can pick up any of the jerseys you see in our videos by using this coupon code at LogoInfusion.com. So until next time, guys, we'll see you lane side.